Warning! This podcast contains spoilers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Asian TV podcast for Star Trek Discovery, episodes one and two, The Vulcan Hello and Battle of the Binary Stars. I'm your host, Mike, and joining me is Cleo and Nikki. Hello. Hi. Hey. I have been waiting for this show for a very long time. The moment we got even the smallest blurb, we were like, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> we're on it. We got it, guys. You can trust us. <laughs> yeah, what? It was like over a year ago. Mm-hmm. And then came the rumors that it was going to be on CBS's new streaming service. And mm. then came the whole... Like, okay, let's just get this out there. A lot of people are not happy with it. That decision has caused the episode to shoot to the top ten list on the Pirate Bay for, <laughs> you know, torrents today. Mm. Um... I mean, if you get the basic package, which is not terribly expensive, but most people who are going to get a streaming service already have Netflix and or Hulu and or HBO Go and or something else. Yep. So it's just adding to the pile. It is. And you still get commercials with the basic package. Yes. And the the problem, the problem is CBS doesn't just want to make money. They want to make all the money. Mm-hmm. And they can make all the money by charging you twice. So I have TV. I have CBS on my television because I have a cable now, cable package. Uh-huh. To watch Discovery, I need to pay CBS again. Yeah. To watch it. So they want all of the money. And a lot of the opinions are it's that a lot of the CBS execs are kind of out of touch. I mean... I would say yes, but, like, other companies are going to try to do the same thing. ABC wants to do it. Disney wants to do it. I mean, they're they're the same company, but that's not the point. I know. They all want to get in on this, you know, they want a slice of the pie. Yeah. (sighs) Anyway, that gripe aside. Well, no, because it's it's an important gripe, and I just want to say I am completely torn. Because I'm, I'm paying to watch this. So are we. Yeah. And I laugh, and I like that people are torrenting it, not paying the company. But for all the torrents, they're not getting the views. Right. This show might tank because it's not getting the views. And that would be an utter shame because so far the show is pretty good. It's so good. The way I explained it earlier was that um, it may not be in the same universe as the new movies, but if you like the new movies, you're going to love this. It it's a it's a movie quality television show. It really so far is. it is. Yes, they went all out with it. Mm-hmm. Um, Which my suspicion is, CBS is like, yeah, you can make this Star Trek show, but we'll give you more money if you put it on our fucking stupid ass streaming service. Oh, mm. now here's the last gripe with this whole thing. That's only in the United States. Yeah. Every other country gets to watch it on Netflix. Mm. Except for Canada, who gets it to watch who gets to watch it on the Space Channel. <laughs> that every Canadian gets with a cable package. Mm-hmm. So we're the ones who have to pay twice for it. Or once if you don't have Honestly- ca- uh, television. I'll take it, because usually other countries get screwed in deals like this. It's it's It had to be our turn eventually. <laughs> so into the show, then. Still not right. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. This is the sixth Star Trek TV series. Um, and it is the very first one where the main character is not a captain of a starship. Mm. Yes, I was thinking that. It's so weird. Yeah. Show is always focused around the captain and their crew, but, you know, the captain was always the lead. Yeah. Like the forefront character, the main character. Mm-hmm. Now not so much. We uh Yeah. We get uh first officer of the Shenzhou Michael Burnham. Who is a lady who was raised by Vulcans. Mm-hmm. And Which this is, is great. It is great. And this is my first like 
thing that I want to be like, I want to yell at people because this is an I've actual seen, complaint. Listen to this. Um, I've seen a lot of people say, "Oh, the main character is heartless. She has no emotion." And I sit there and I go, <clears throat> "Have you watched the episode? Because she was brought up in a fucking Vulcan society. Of course, she's not going to be emotional. She's thinking logically because that's what she, she was, was emotional. Up. She, w- she like, was as much as she wanted to deny it. She was. She was. Yeah. yeah. And, that's you why know, she and- made." These stupid decisions that got her into the freaking brig in the first place. And the problem with that is she's raised by Vulcans to think logically like them, Mm -hmm. but they don't know how human emotions work. She was never taught how to properly deal with them. So when they come up, it kind of breaks her. Mm -hmm. And not to mention that her mentor is Sarek, of all people. (laughs) Sarek, who, if you've watched past Star Trek seasons... He has a tentative grasp on emotions. Himself. My like, favorite line from him is, Oh no, why would I waste all of this energy just to se- se- the sentiment of saying goodbye to you? I'm like, eh, well, and that fair. And that is perfect Sarek right there. Because he, he does love people. He does give a shit. But he can't say it. Yep. He yep. cannot say it. It is completely yep. taboo for him to say, I love you, I care about you. It's like, yep. why would I waste my own well-being just to say goodbye? Bye. Like this I mean, isn't goodbye. The, yeah, and that's the stuff that uh, we saw in the Star Trek movies with Spock and his dad, mm-hmm. where his dad, being all Vulcan, still fell in love. Mm-hmm. He admits it to Spock. He says, "I loved your mother." Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I like that stuff. Exactly. Um. But yeah, that was my like my. The internet does not make sense, and I want to grab each and every one of them and be like, no, listen to me, you are Did you wrong. watch the freaking episode? Exactly. But I will give it this. So this show immediately, they hit all the good notes for me. Like the opening with, you know, Captain Georgiou, uh, Giorgio, however you pronounce it, I'm apologizing. I think yeah. She, um, her and Michael on the planet, I already instantly got like a, you know, Kirk Spock feel or like a Kirk Bones feel from the two of them. Yes. Like they had that chemistry. Yeah, it was great. Um I immediately got that. And it's like, oh well, you know, all Starfleet captains are kind of similar. They're doing the same kind of let's fix this shit before anybody notices <laughs> kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Alien yeah. planet. Radiation was causing their water table to dry up. They were all gonna die of dehydration in a week. Mm-hmm. Give them the water, give them the chance to Yep. Mm-hmm. Grow as a species. And not let them know we did it. Yep. Because that'll violate, you know, pri- uh, standing order the prime one. Direct. Yeah, it becomes the prime directive. General order one or whatever it's called. Oh, is that what it's called now? It was called something different in the original series, I think. Oh, okay. She mentioned it too, the captain. I just can't, or yeah. Michael did. I just can't remember the uh, exact wording mm-hmm. they used. But yeah. Can't violate the I guess my brain just replaced it with the printer. <laughs> well, that's what we're used to. That's what, yeah. That's yeah. what it is. It, you know, it morphed into that Later at some point. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, they've been together for seven years, and the captain's still just, you know, trying to teach her... I don't know how to put it. Trying to groom her for command, basically. Yeah. Well, she, did, she did say to her, she's like, I think you're ready for your own ship. It's like, yeah. that, that would mean a lot more if I didn't think we were going to die in this desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's, well, she's trying to teach her how to, how to think like a commander. Like, think like someone who's responsible for a large number of people. Because mm-hmm. she ended up proving opposite. Proving that she's thinking like someone who isn't thinking about everyone necessarily. I mean... For mo- I, I kind of agree, and I, I kind of don't, because I know she was acting on impulse because of her um, distaste for the Klingons. Um, but she also had, like, on-hand information from Sarek. Not to say that, you know, Sarek is the most reliable source. She was, you know, you know expressing her feelings. Uh-huh. Expressing her feelings, because she's human. She, she has feelings, people, to the it did come to the point where she was fighting with the captain, but she was very passionate about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that, that doesn't, that doesn't mean she's heartless. I'm sorry, guys. No, it doesn't. Exactly. No. And she, um, 
I don't know. I had no problem with it. I mean, it worked out it did. in a way. Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> so all this is happening kind of at the same time as a Klingon who seems to be... I don't know what you would... like. He's like the Klingon equivalent to an evangelical or something. I, it, you want to know? It, it's like... They reminded me of the Red Priests from Game of Thrones, a little. Yeah, I got that feel, too. Because they were talking about the light, and I was like, the Lord of Light? They're talking about Follow the light, the, the and his torchbearer, <laughs> and the fire, yeah. and the prophecies yep. that need to be fulfilled. Yep. And I'm like, all right. You know, unite the 24 warring houses, you know, into the great empire again. Like, oh, so not so much of an empire right now, are we? Mm. No, so is, he like like a, a, is he like a self proclaimed prophet because That's when what he we seems saw like. the yeah because because when we when we get the flashbacks when he was a little kid he was basically an outcast yeah well yeah he yeah which is why he sees so much in the the white skinned uh klingon yeah, yeah of himself mm -hmm. which we've never seen an albino klingon before as far we as have. i know we uh, have deep space nine there was a uh, space... yeah that was that one episode where dax went off with all of you know the original series Klingons, like Kern and all those people. Oh, okay. And it was an albino Klingon. Right over my head. <laughs> but uh, you didn't get to that did episode. Did not remember that. No, I, I never did. Um, I was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, apparently, you know, hey, even Klingons have, you know, skin color racism and stuff like that. You're a white Klingon. You're inferior just because of that. Mm -hmm. And you have no house. Well, yeah. Um, so that, this Klingon's calling for war, which is not something new to Star Trek fans. No, it, and it really shouldn't have been something new. Other people who on the internet think that they shouldn't have war in Star Trek. Now, they... Well, well to be fair, the vision for Star Trek was supposed to be... Or at least was it for the like the next generation? It was supposed to be like this is the peace, this is the world of of peace where there are no conflicts. Yeah, that was like an original vision for it. Yeah, so. yeah. This, this is this but is that, history though. This yeah, is how, exactly. Like, how that really bit them. came to be. Mm -hmm. Like, guys, they got there. Guys. <laughs> you know, they just needed some. This is one of the hurdles they had to overcome. Exactly. But uh, I mean, we have a complete redesign of the Klingons, which is the second time this has happened. Because mm -hmm. we have the Klingons... Actually, the third time it's happened, technically. <laughs> we have the Klingons we all know and love. Worf and, you know, that style. Mm -hmm. Then in Star Trek Into Darkness, when they show Klingons, they were radically different. You know, bejeweled, like, you know, gold earrings pierced all over their faces and stuff. Like, you know, one reviewer called them Blingons. <laughs> and now we have another completely different interpretation, and they're all hairless. I, I I know I know there's been like you know articles and there's been like interviews and stuff with the writers saying, oh no, they're going to be all completely hairless. I'm hoping for one of those magnificent houses where they just happen to have hair, mm -hmm. just beautiful, like, glorious crazy. hair. Because that's one and... of the defining characteristics of Klingons. They all like. By the end of Deep State Base Nine, Worf's fire red braid was down past his knees. <laughs> uh, well, they're they're saying that these are purebred Klingons, like mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the what is it? Because the, there there was that virus that made In them, Enterprise, yeah. The DNA makes them a little look a little more human. Um, right. So these are untouched by that virus. These are like pure, pure Klingons. That was and they even say it at some point. He uses the word purebred Klingons. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah, he does. I mean, that was their, that was their canonical way of explaining, you know, differences in makeup and costume design between 1960 and 1990. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that was their clever little hey, way. It was a, it was a genetic virus. It was a virus gone wrong. You yeah. retcon what you gotta retcon, and you move on. You move on. Yep. You keep going. Well, um, into the meat of it. Uh, on the edge of Federation space, they find a relay station has a hole blasted in it. They don't know by what. 
Doesn't look like, you know, they're not sure if it was something deliberate. But, you know, there's an anomaly in the debris field orbiting two binary stars, and it's got a scattering field around it. And I'm just thinking, oh, is this how they're going to do the Klingon cloaking devices? Because one of the, you know, running theories is that Klingon ships never truly went invisible. They just went invisible to all known sensors. Like, if you looked out a window, Mm. you'd see them. But, you know, that, that was, like, kind of an unconfirmed theory or whatever. But, that was my thought. I'm like, oh, is this how they're doing cloaking devices? Like, it's a scattering field, you know, and, like, it's imperfect because this is how many years ago or whatever. No, it's just a random object, you know, an ancient Klingon beacon. Yeah. And, you know, Michael's out there risking the radiation. 20 minutes, that's all you get. Not a nanosecond. 19 minutes. She wouldn't let her go the full 20. (laughs) Yeah, not a nanosecond longer. (laughs) And... She's out there explaining it like, this is a work of art. This thing is amazing. Who the hell built this? Why is it here? And what the hell is going on? That's a Klingon standing there threatening And that's a person. Oh, shit. (laughs) Yeah. I like the Batleth designs. How they redid that. Because it now actually looks like a feasible and dangerous weapon. Mm Mm-hmm. Aside from that... Yeah, they did really good with that. You know... Michael got really lucky. Huh? I was just going to put that. She oh. got really lucky. Yeah, yeah, she got really lucky. He didn't stab her on her way to pushing him. Uh, mm-hmm. Pushing him on his own blade. Yeah. It's like, congratulations, you just made first contact with a Klingon for a and century, him. and you killed him. Mm-hmm. Mind yeah, you, he was job. going to kill you, because that's yeah. his thing, but... Yeah, to be yeah. fair, he did strike first, so... Yeah, mm-hmm. he did. At which point she gets, you know, jettisoned into space and they have to recover her and she runs out of the, you know, chamber getting the radiation treatments, like her skin literally falling off her body at this point. Mm. It's like, raise shields, red alert, there's Cleons out there. <laughs> yeah, okay, lady, you're crazy. <laughs> and I at mean, first. and this is, again, where I, I touch on base where... Is this in any sense logical for her? I think it's more on the feeling side. Like, she felt the need that it was imperative to tell these people because she she feels like they're under... They're, they're being threatened. Yeah. yeah. Um, in a logical way, she would have been like, all right, um, just pass on the message, I'll get treated. And yeah. the other thing, they didn't explicitly say it, but they're kind of hinting at her parents were killed by Klingons. Yeah. Is well, what they're very heavily handily... Her entire... Uh, village or... Se- settlement or whatever. Settlement, like, yeah. Yeah, kill. they're very heavy-handedly pushing us in that direction. I believe there was a a, a flashback actually in the second episode where that... Sarek mind melds with her. So I, I, it was the research facility where she was being trained that got bombed first. Well, or no, I thought after. it was her colony got attacked. Then she got taken in by the Vulcans Mm -hmm. because she's having the flashback to the the colony getting attacked. And then the 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 learning center gets attacked. So she gets attacked by Klingons twice. Yes. So it's obvious why she's Mm. not very fond of the Klingons. And why she has first-hand knowledge. Yes. But, yeah. Um, Yeah, she goes... She goes to Sarek for some advice, and he, you know, tells her how the Vulcans dealt with the Klingons. First contact resulted in the ship, the Vulcan ship being destroyed. So he shot first, and a- didn't a- bother asking questions. Yeah, it, every every incident after coming in contact with Klingons after that, the Vulcans shot first, and gained their respect. Yeah, as he, yeah, as he put it, it, you know, firefight after firefight, battle after battle led to a mutual respect, and respect mm-hmm. led to dialogue, and dialogue led to a tentative peace. Yeah. Which yep. is why Michael's plan was not going to work. Because this is one incident. Mm-hmm. One, yeah. One incident is not going to instantly grant the Federation the respect of the Klingons. Right. One, and... one time shooting first does yes. not solve this. And that's being, through... being that they already had a standing of, you know, like a ceasefire. It, it was it was not, you know, oh, we have peace. But like, it's kind of like with the Romulans in the the further uh, seasons of Star Trek, 
like season three, season four, where there is that, you know, that Romulan line, there's the Federation line, there's a neutral space. So it was kind of like in that deal. Even though they hadn't had contact with the Klingons for a hundred years, they kind of had that still, they still had that like invisible line. Mm hmm. Like, we don't go and aggravate them, they don't come aggravate us, you know, exactly. and everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, not well, that, okay anymore. Not okay, no. Because no. they're like, we don't like this line you've drawn. Mm -hmm. Go fuck yourself. Yep. Target, you know, lock phasers on the object. You know, we have to, you know, they're yep. out there. We have to threaten them. And then it's like, the flagship just de or I don't know what to call it, his tomb ship, because he's got all the coffins mm. on the outside. Yeah. Damn thing well, decloaks yeah. clean yeah. in front of them. I'm like, oh, okay, so that wasn't, like, you know, their way they're doing cloaking. This is how they're doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, scary. you know, big, giant, scary old Klingon battlecruiser sitting in front of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And friggin' he just rams through, like, clean through the Admiral's ship. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about, ramming speed. <laughs> well, that wasn't it. That was another ship, though, that did that. That was, I thought, no, that was his. He no, said. That, no. uh, they had all the warships, right? And it was at that point where the Admiral got there, and they're like, oh, yeah, they're, you know, they're pulling, uh, you know, Michael's ship and all that out of the asteroid field so they don't get smushed to smithereens and stuff. And as that's happening, his ship is yeah. the admiral ship is still moving forward, and then then they decloak, and then they're like, "Oh, let's surprise them!" And then it was the admiral ship that collided with the Klingon I, ship. I know that, but I thought that was a different Klingon ship. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was mm -hmm. you know. That was the big bad. Well, no, because they didn't decloak until they were really wedged into the ship. Yeah, yeah, they didn't decloak until they were already crashed into yeah, the damn ship. Yeah, it was ship. like. Yeah. And it was the big bad. And that that's was the after. Tavaka or whatever was on. Yeah, that's after he. Lit the you know, apparently the structure was a giant beacon. It's like it's gonna shine as bright as a goddamn star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wasn't that what um, the Vulcan said? He was like, uh, "Oh, there's a, I see, there's a new star." It's like or I'm receiving reports that there's a new star in the sector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like wow, sassy much. It's like what's that's the only going emotion on? Vulcans have: sass. Mm -hmm. Yes, sass, sass. and yep. disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> that they didn't feel right. Disappointment's a feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, anyway, that was the summoning for a ship representing each of the twenty-four great houses. Mm -hmm. Just warp in. It's like, oh, you guys are fucked. You're surrounded. Well, not surrounded, but you have a wall of Klingons in front of you. Yeah. Oh, but then. But then <laughs> they get a wall of Federation ships. Yep. And they just stare at each other for a while. Mostly because the Klingons are all talking to each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you got the one Klingon, you know, like the head of his house or whatever, like, you're nobody, who the fuck are you to summon me? Like, yeah. you know, stay in your fucking lane, dude. And everybody else <laughs> is like, I want to kind of listen to what he's got to say. He's making some good points here. You know? Yeah. He it talks was, about restoring was, glory. Yeah. It was, a, it was a very Hitler speech. It was. It was oh a gosh, very Hitler-esque speech, speech, you know, restore glory, restore honor, and remain Klingon. Remain yeah. pure. Mm -hmm. It was a very Hitler mm -hmm. speech. Yes. Well, um, it What worked. I noticed, though, was out of the 24 houses, I think only seven or eight hologrammed onto his little thing. Yeah. So, like, either the other ones just definitely weren't interested and were just there to fight, or... I'm guessing... I don't know. I'm they guessing, might be lesser houses... Maybe. Or I'm that are pledged under larger houses. That, or either every house sent a representative, but only like six or seven heads of their houses actually showed up. Yeah, could be. Mm. And the okay. rest just sent like envoys, like, what the fuck is this thing? Go f check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. But see why, if you know, see why this, you know, the beacon is shining, please. You know, Gondor calls for aid is all I can think of. <laughs> I, I feel like it's a, like a Mulan uh, situation where they where they light the torches and because the Huns are coming over the whole Great Wall of China. <laughs> well, Klingons liked what he had to say because, mm -hmm. and I like that. I, I like the way they did this. One ship fires, then the other ship returns fire, and it's like they all get the message slowly. 
because, you know, they all start firing increasing volleys, and every ship starts firing at a different time. It's not like... Oh, shit, they're shooting! It's like, you know, exactly. It was a reaction. It's like, oh, shit, they're shooting. Oh, shit, they're shooting back! <laughs> and then finally, everybody's shooting at each other. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I love how they did the effects for the phasers. So good. Yeah. And I love so how good. they did the effects for the torpedoes. It looked so good. <laughs> it did. It looked great. Ah, yeah. I mean, we're we're used to the little pew pews from you know Shatner and 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 all that. And if you notice, yeah. all the Federation ships are like the you know they're smaller. All the like the Shenzhou is it looks like the you know the NX Enterprise from Enterprise the series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, it might even be the same class of ship because it looks very <laughs> damn similar. It could be. So like. This was before the the Federation started building the really big motherfuckers. Like, you know, the Enterprise that Kirk flew, or the Galaxy mm-hmm. Class Enterprise D and all that shit. Mm-hmm. So They were saying they did have a like an old uh teleport. Mm-hmm. They yeah, they were using an old transporter. Trans transporter, you know. Oh my god. And that was like one of my favorite things from Enterprise was it's like this might actually kill you. Half <laughs> yeah, because transporters were new. <laughs> That was like a new yeah. technology because, you know, the Enterprise is the state-of-the-art ship. It's the first warp core that can go warp five, and they have transporters. Mm-hmm. And the chief engineer was afraid to use them. Yep. <laughs> he was afraid he'd come back fused into the hull plating or something like that. <laughs> but to be fair, their first, like, half a dozen tests destroyed their test object, so his fears were founded. Anyway, yeah, old transporters, old ship. It's, you know, whole thing's going to hell. And right at that point, you know, right before the battle starts, Michael kind of takes Sarek's advice to the extreme and knocks out the captain. Yeah, I was like, oh, that might have been one step too far. Bang, with the pinch in the shoulder. And yeah, then she comes she out and is like, lock targets, prepare to fire. And, you know, Lieutenant Saru there is who... I like him a little bit. You Love know, him. he's the paranoid alien. And he gives the, you know, the reasoning. Because, like, people from his culture, there were, you know, there were predators and prey. He was prey. You know, mm-hmm. he's, like, instinctually designed to know when death is coming, as he put it. Mm-hmm. And death is coming. Well, he also said that the predators of their planet bred his people to mm-hmm. be cattle. Yeah, basically cattle. Yep. So... Which is weird, because he's so lanky. He is kind of lanky. <laughs> Which well, is, it's actor, Doug though. Jones, who is a well-known character actor. He is a well- he's a well-known character actor stuff. for being tall, thin, and lanky. And d- monster makeup. Like yes. that, he is usually done up. Always. Yeah. <laughs> like Abe in Hellboy. He is yep. Abe in Hellboy. And is he's Abe. been in pan- uh, he was in Pan's Labyrinth mm-hmm. as yes. the fawn. Oh yeah, uh, that's no. Oh, he was the eyeball hand yep, monster. He was, the, the he was eyeball. a couple of things mm-hmm. in that, I believe. Um, he's been in a lot of stuff, but always in heavy makeup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he questions it immediately. It. Like this does not sound like what the captain would want. Yeah, this is, does not sound like what the captain just said like four seconds ago. And then the and captain comes tell- out with a phaser. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, the she rest of the crew quick. was thinking it, too. Like, yeah. they followed her orders to, like, lock on and stuff, but mm-hmm. there was definitely hesitation in the firing because there was enough time for her to tell them to fire and, like, a couple seconds pass, and then the captain comes out. Like, so yeah. they clearly didn't want to do it. And she recovered quickly because it was a human doing a nerve pinch, not a Vulcan. Yeah. Like, you know, humans, even growing up on Vulcan, they're still far weaker. So, you know, a Vulcan doing that pin, she'd have been out, the f- you know, knocked the fuck out for a while. Anyway. And I also assume she doesn't do it that often? That too. No, yeah, she's probably out of practice. Well, it gets her a one-way trip to the brig. Yes. When the shit hits the fan. And, this is, you know, some of the series, it wasn't until the new movies where they really got, like, you know, the horrors of a damaged starship, like, correct, but this one is going with that. Yeah. 
you know, the one lieutenant or, you know, crewman from the bridge with his head all banged up. It's like, this is the brig, not sick bay. Call the doctor. Yeah, tell him to get with the down concussion. here. Yeah, clearly like delirious. Wandering. It's like, tell him to get down here and come get you. Okay, I'm going to do that. Boom, whole room's gone and he's out in the space. Yeah, I, I didn't know what happened there for a second. And then I was like, what? Wow. And I noticed, <laughs> And I noticed the costume design from the beginning. But it wasn't until that scene that I realized we can't make red shirt jokes anymore. Nope. Everyone's got a blue shirt. <laughs> the distinctions are in the it's either gold or it seems like gold for for what used to be red and yellow shirts, mm -hmm. and then silver for science and medical, mm -hmm. which yes. I'm totally cool with. I think all the costumes look great. They do yes, look great. They do look great. And. Uh... So the brig gets blown up, except for her nicely, you know, emergency force field in cube. That was very lucky oh my God. for her. But they did, that and then a she's sitting times. there having to listen to like how long it's going to be until sh they divert power away. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like this That's is. How, it's like you're sitting there, you know, listening to the computer count down to when it's going to shut the force field off and vent you into space. Yeah. Which I like that she outlaws it to the computer. Oh, that, that was, was the best part. Because the computer's like, no, bitch, no. And they're just like, well, what if? And this situation, the computer's just like, tick, tick, tick. Yeah. I guess you're right. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta save me. Yep. <laughs> you have a 43% chance of survival. I'll take, I'll take it. it. <laughs> it's better than zero. Mm -hmm. Better than zero. But yeah, that happened a couple times. It happened on the bridge that one crewman, you know, was trying to make contact, you know, the comms officer, he gets sucked out a hole that just got blown in his station. Mm -hmm. That ship gets fucked up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, no. Yeah, see, I was right. That was a different Klingon ship that decloaked. Because the it Admiral... Was? Yeah, because the Admiral, um... He self-destructed self his ship and destroyed it with oh, him. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because I'm like, there's no way... Oh, yeah, okay. Wait. I was just... Because I, when I watched that, I was like, oh, that had to destroy that ship. And then when we cut back, I was like, I guess it didn't destroy the ship. <laughs> yeah, because that would have taken off. I mean, to be fair, to, oh, I don't even know. That guy, the, the self the self proclaimed prophet Klingon, his ship was pretty big. Yeah, but if he rammed it nose first, like, you know, uh, no, like, there would have been nothing left to his ship. Yeah. Like, he was contacting the Admiral's ship when he, you know, just mm -hmm. told the warp core to, you know, like, you know, hey, it's a handy self-destruct mechanism. We're just going to shut down reactor containment, and we are now an antimatter bomb. It Boom. just it looked like the, the Klingon ship that they rammed into was so large in comparison when, like, you see all the other Klingon ships coming in, and they're about the same size as of all the Federation ships. About half of them, but most of them were a good part bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, a good, a good bit. I mean, I guess that goes to show that they handled the battle scene pretty, pretty good. Because if they're moving around so much and you can't really keep your eye on, like comparing the size, it's just photon, and like you're focusing on the damage rather than the actual ships themselves. It's, it's a really good, well played out CGI scene. Uh -huh. Like they did really good. Yeah. Well, I mean, the battle pretty much ends with. Significant losses on both sides. Mm -hmm. Federation ships are just sitting there drifting, a good part of them. So a good number of Klingon ships were destroyed. But mm -hmm. it basically says, go back, you know, go back to Kronos, tell everybody, you know, tell the rest of the houses, tell everybody, you know, this is happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, basically call the banners. Like, call everybody to war. Mm -hmm. And that. And my favorite part, which I am so happy happened. <laughs> He's collecting all the dead with the tractor beams, and she's just like, the captain's all ready to take their little repair drone thing that we saw at one point, take mm -hmm. it out and, by herself yeah. with a warhead and yeah. blow the ship up. And then she's just like, forget the bumblebee. And I'm like, you're going to transport that onto a corpse, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> and then she's just like, you know, bring me a warhead to transport a room one. And I'm like, yes, I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like that's the kind of stuff that makes a captain. She really like mm -hmm. reminded me of 
Kirk in a lot of ways with like that sort of out of the know, box on thinking. the fly thinking of a strat mm-hmm. like the walking in the shape of the in the sand mm-hmm. making the shape of the the, the star the yeah figures. yeah out of the box thinking for sure takes the whole you know blows the neck of that ship off you know really does some serious damage mm-hmm. and then you know she actually listens to Michael's suggestion there get on that ship you know don't kill him. Mm-hmm. You kill him, he's a martyr. And that's it. That's all the Klingons need. He is among the honored dead. Mm-hmm. He died in combat. They have a cause. <sighs> Go I for it. And then Michael the doesn't issue. listen to Michael. <laughs> I was just like, did you Did you just kill him? This whole did you scene, just the, thing the he whole said plan to do? fell apart. Like, yeah, you killed a bunch of Klingons. You got into combat with the guy. The captain gets stabbed clean through the chest and is effectively dead. Actually, mm-hmm. she is dead. Um, and then Michael blows a hole in the Klingon she's supposed to be capturing's chest. Yeah. I mean, it didn't look fatal to me. They gave us a camera shot cleared through his torso. Yeah, no, it was. I thought it was, like, up here. I... No, it was in his back, and I think it came out right here. Okay. So it was a little high on his back, but it came out. If they chest. stick to canon, it's a survivable wound for a Klingon. Yeah. Because they have... Two pairs of every organ. Yeah. Well, it seemed like it killed him. It does seem like it killed him. But... Because what's-his-name was crying, so I I wouldn't think a Klingon would would cry for someone who's just injured. I mean, even at that point, um, when she's getting teleported back, he's not quite dead. They could still take him. Take him. Take his body. Take the captain's body. It's like, no, I must take you now. It's like... I have no life signs yeah. to lock on to. Lock on to something else, goddammit. You have advanced scanners. Find her body. I, yeah, she, that's like what was... gave her at least five more seconds. She was right there. She could have grabbed the captain's body and she would have been taken back with Michael. Like, uh, But that's the thing also, because Cyrus not a... Uh, no. You know, that kind of a fighter or a leader. He's not a fighter at all, in fact. He's yeah. not. It's like... So his decision was purely instinctual, which is run away. Let's go. We're out of here. Come lock on. Lock on to yeah. the only other piece of human DNA you could find on that ship. And, you know... I mean, she's only mostly dead. Right. <laughs> mostly dead. <laughs> she's got a gaping bat lift wound in her chest, you know. But mostly dead. Which has got me a little interested. You don't think she's actually dead? Well, oh, we'll get into that, but I mean, the episode ends the second episode ends with, you know, Michael getting basically imprisoned for life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, she just says, I'm guilty for all you know, she pleads guilty to everything. Yeah. Which is a very Vulcan thing. They take responsibility for their actions. Yep. And, you know, logic tells her, even if she refuted there's nothing. There's there's evidence against her. There's no way out of that. Yeah, the entire crew is against her. Yep. Because I, as sure as I'm sure, a lot of them don't wholly blame her. I think a lot of them are like, "You got our captain killed. You got us into war." I think mm-hmm. a lot of them think that way towards yeah. her. Now, we get a preview for like you know a this season on Star Trek. We haven't even met. Like we haven't even seen the USS Discovery or any of the rest of the cast yet. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. So we haven't gotten any of that. But from the preview, I'm getting an extremely Janeway Tom Paris vibe from the whole thing. From the beginning of Voyager. Because Tom Paris was in a penal colony and she pulled him out to pilot the ship. Like, mm-hmm. I need your unique skill set to do this. Yeah. And it gets you out of prison. And that's kind of the feel I'm getting with Captain was it Captain Isaacs, I think? No, it's just, yeah. Well, yeah. No, that's the actor who plays him. That's the actor. L- right. L- 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 Lorca. Yes, that's it. Captain Lorca. Lorca? Oh, I think that's how you say it. Anyway, yeah, that's the that's feel nice. I'm getting there. Like, you know, I need your particular skill set and it'll get you out of prison. Yeah. Honestly, it seems like this is common occurrence in this part of the timeline. Because it seems like a lot of other prisoners are, are, are doing the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It did show, like, a little blurb of them being transported onto the Discovery. Mm-hmm. There was, like, 
including including Michael, it looked like there was five other people. There was five people on that uh, transport ship. Right. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for the series, but the thing that confused me is the Captain's dead. Right? Captain George is dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Michelle Yo, Yo Yo, I'm terrible at pronouncing Chinese names. I am so sorry. She's credited with 15 episodes. So either she's not dead or we're getting a lot of fucking flashbacks. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we did get a good amount of flashbacks in these two episodes, so it is possible yeah. that we're getting and flashbacks. But there when is a seven also... year period. Of when Michael joined and to yeah. her death, and so there the is admiral, that amount of time. The admirals whose ship got rammed and he's you know self destructed and everything. He's credited with thirteen episodes. So yeah, must so be flashbacks. It's got to mm. be flashbacks galore. Yeah. Either that, or they fed out false information to people to throw you for a loop. Maybe. And uh, what it seemed like the discovery is up to is really weird experimental shit. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So it, it might be possible that we get those characters back, whether they're alive or it's a weird, like, phantom. I don't know. I don't know. It looks crazy. I mean, there's this random headcanon, and Cr- Chrissy, I read this to you, I think, a while ago, where the Federation, you know, all this crazy bullshit only happens on Federation ships, like holodeck characters coming to life and trying mm. to murder people. And, you yeah. know... All these crazy sciency anomalies, like, you know, Lieutenant Barkley becoming a computer and taking over the ship and slipping them across the galaxy through, like, a graviton, a hole in oh, subspace or something. Oh, I hated that episode. Like, this shit only happens <laughs> to Federation ships, because they're, like, you know, you know, to, like, human-run Federation ships, because they're toying... They're, look- ar- they're looking for trouble. They're toying around the galaxy in ships so advanced they don't understand half of how they work. And they're just flinging, you know, they've reconfigured the deflector dish 900 different ways to solve their problem. Mm. And, I mean, this kind of seems like what the Discovery is going to be doing. Some really crazy experimental shit. Mm. My favorite analogy to that is, you know, Romulans have cloaking devices, Klingons have cloaking devices. Federation's not allowed to have them by a treaty. So Mm. the Federation decides, we're going to secretly try to make a cloaking device. But we're not just going to make one that the Klingons and Romulans have just to see if we can. We're going to make one that phases us out of normal space so we can pass through a fucking planet while we're cloaked. It's like... What? Is that Okay, yeah, that does make a lot of sense because a lot of the stupid shit they do... <laughs> you know, like, it's just... I can't even. It's just like, yeah, that, that's stupid. Why your would you do that? Your experiment failed and you got half your crew fused into rock. Exactly. <laughs> Like, this is how we end up in a dimension with Baylor demons, guys. Come on, focus. <laughs> and someone runs the joke, like, you know, the ship requested two extra warp cores, and they blew all three of them up, theirs and the two up, and they tore a hole into another dimension. And when they got there, it was a slightly different version of our universe, and they were offended by them, so they stole their warp cores and blew them up, tore a hole back to our dimension. And the whole reason they were doing this is because they wanted to turn a star into a Taurus. Like, you know, in a, like a Taurus shape. It's like, they managed to turn the star into the Taurus, and we have no fucking idea how. They broke a thousand different well-established theories. They called all of physics into question, and they've given us thousands of hours of debate to talk about here. This is from, like, a Vulcan scientist. <laughs> Even the Vulcans aren't on board with this shit. Like, come on. <laughs> it's like, we just give them a ship and push them out the door and say, Go. <laughs> Hey. They're Gandalf. The Falcons are kind of like Gandalf. <laughs> All I did was give your uncle a little nudge out of the door. Oh no, wait! I wanted to talk about the the robot lady. Yes. He had like a a legitimate robot head, mm-hmm. and like a lady body, and she didn't have much to say until like she got blown up, <laughs> and, and all he heard her do was scream. But I was like. That's like a robot. <laughs> it's like pre-data. And I, didn't remember. I was like wondering if she had AI. Like and She I... said nothing, but like my mind was going in circles about her. Like I know they mentioned that, you know, androids and like cyborgs and stuff were toyed around with. Like Data, data and Lore were supposed to be the ones that could pass for human and not be told apart. But I mean, you know, 
Data was, you know, they were taking, he was, ta Dr. Soong was taking his time with Data because Lore turned out to be batshit crazy and a megalomaniac. Oh, so crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so crazy. Some of my favorite episodes, though. They were some of the, someone made a list of Next Generation episodes you can watch and you can skip the rest of the series. And I, <laughs> and I watched the list and I'm like, yeah, really, right. you could just watch all, you can watch that, those dozen episodes and you're set. You got the whole gist of the show and you watched the 12 best episodes mm -hmm. and you missed really nothing. But. And then watch the movies. And then watch the movies. I don't know. Yeah. My overall, uh, I liked it a lot. I'm a Star Trek fan, like huge, and not so much that you know any little changes are going to make me butt hurt and not watch the show. Oh yeah, absolutely not. I I give it a like, I'll give it an eight or nine out of ten. It was really good. I Definitely, I especially for a pilot, which I'm going. Even though it was double episode, it was a pilot, and. Yeah. I hate when people pass judgment on a new show. This is a new show, guys. It's it's not a continuation of Star Trek. It it's before everything else happened. It's a new show. Uh after Enterprise, but before everything else. The stuff that everybody really resonates with, with like all this Shatner and like, you know, yeah. Next Generation, those are the ones that people really, really remember because Yeah, Enterprise the... didn't do well. No. <laughs> it's okay, but... I love it. Doesn't matter. But this pilot is not the beef of this series. The beef is coming in the third episode. We haven't even met the Discovery. We haven't exactly. even seen the ship the exactly. show is named for. So the people going, oh my god, but Discovery is the worst show. This happened, this happened, this happened. This character is stupid. And this war and that war and this fighting. You No, no, you do. You cannot pass judgment on these pilot episodes. Because that's not well, you what can. This, not really. They, yeah, you can. You can. And there are plenty of pilots I've seen where I'm like, that's dumb. I'm not watching this show. And they're allowed to think that. Um, but you gotta suspend if you want to be into the show. That's, I just, I, I feel like, yeah, I've watched pilots where they're shitty, but then I've given them a chance for the next couple episodes, and they're completely different format. Like, look at, like, the first episode of Gotham completely different from the rest of the, the first season. The pilot was done completely differently, and I was very, very, like, hesitant to watch the rest of the series. But once I gave it that chance, I've been hooked since. So, like, I know for a fact, after seeing just that little blurb of episode three, that this is not even now, the beginning. Oh yeah, of course. And I also think it's a combination of that and the first episode aired on CBS. Mm. So I'm going to put you know put it out there that maybe like a quarter of I don't know I don't want to give a number but a good portion probably of those negative reviews are people that are pissed off that to watch the rest of the series they gotta pay for okay. a streaming service that yeah. they're gonna only yeah. watch one show on. And the bullshit, like, surrounding shows can influence how people, you know, talk about the show. And which, yes. that's bad, because, you, mm -hmm. one, you're being subjective, and when you talk about shows, a lot of the times you want to be as objective as possible. No one's ever going to be completely objective. We all have our likes and our dislikes and whatever, but, I love you know. I love Star Trek, I love sci-fi, I'm already subjective. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. I cannot give you an objective <laughs> opinion, because I like it. I, it's it's funny because usually on the Wikipedia's they will have like the the, the breakdown and they'll have what the, um, you know the the ratings not the ratings what's the viewers. The, the ratings, ratings yeah, viewership viewers, whatever viewership that column is suspiciously missing mm -hmm. <laughs> the right column is just not there for the show probably because it is on bullshit CBS uh, all, all access. access and I mean one thing. Look at Game of Thrones. That gets a lot of viewers. Okay? That doesn't count the probable double, triple that number of people who pirate it and watch it. And sure. the only reason they do that is because you need an HBO subscription mm -hmm. to watch Game of Thrones. And so, that's this is going to be another very heavily pirated show. And I can tell you one thing about CBS. They don't like that. No. But here's the thing. Uh, HBO, you've always had to pay extra for HBO. Uh -huh. 
CBS has always been a basic cable show. Basic that cable. comes with every fucking package that you don't have to pay extra for. And now they want you to pay for your cables, watch your stuff on the fucking TV, and then pay for the... Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't it's had just, it's a dumb idea. in a while, but I'm pretty sure CBS is still free. Yeah, If you it have is. just a basic antenna, like, or like a digital hookup or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's CBS, NBC, Fox, ABC, and one more channel. There's like they a... don't do antennas anymore. It's like no. a little thingy. Yeah, but if you have yeah. that little thingy, I think there's a dozen channels that are free. Yep. CBS has always been one of them. Yep. So... And it's... Oh, I was going to say something now. I forgot. And Star Trek has always been on CBS, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I think. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. It's been so long. I never watched Star Trek. Like and... Enterprise came out when I was in high school. I Me don't too. remember what channel I was watching it on. I don't remember either. I remember I started what the first Deep Space Nine I saw was on Spike TV when that came out. The first Enterprise I saw was on Sci Fi. And I streamed and binged all the other series. Yep. Like I would always catch episodes of Star Trek on TV, but I never watched them when they were airing. I mean Next Generation started airing when I was four or three yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Real freaking run. Yeah. Funny, before I even ever watched the show, I it was Halloween and my cousins and my uncle dressed up like, you know, Next Generation characters. And I was mm -hmm. just like, what's that? I always knew what the Borg were. Uh, like, yeah. before I ever watched... It's like, before I ever watched Star Wars, I knew who Darth Vader was. Before I yep. ever watched Star Trek, I knew who the Borg were. It's always the villains. Like, I remember, I think I was... So iconic! Se I was seven years old, I'm digging through VHS tapes, and I see one, and I'm like, Return of the Jetty. Mm -hmm. Jetty! <laughs> and I'm just like, whatever, so I put it in the, you know, it was just like written on like a piece of masking tape on the back of the cassette, so oh, yeah. I just shove it in the VCR, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And then just like it off of live TV. And I just like I put it in, press play, five seconds later, BAM the Star Wars opening in my face, and I'm just like, the f you know I didn't say that obviously, but my <laughs> seven year old brain was thinking, What the fuck is this? And then that, you know, that opens with Vader taking, you know, the shuttle of the Death Star, and I'm just like, This is what movie he's from. <laughs> and I was hooked ever since and I watched Star Wars in reverse order Jedi, Empire, and then A New Hope I... that's awesome <laughs> but the same thing for Star Trek I knew who the Borg were and then I caught it on TV I'm like, watching mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. god that used to scare me in the, what movie was that where like uh, Picard has the dream where he's a bore. That scared First me. First Contact. Oh, that scared. I love that movie. That was the movie, yeah. Okay. <sighs> that, that used to scare me. Like, mm -hmm. God, Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah, Picard was forever fucked up by that. Mm. Yeah. Yep. I mean, they showed you more of that with Seven and Nine in Voyager, but a mm -hmm. lot of Trek fans complain that they really, you know, dumbed down the Borg in that. Mm. But I don't know. Anyway, I, I got nothing else to talk about, you guys. I want this show to do good. I am torn, because I like that people are pirating it, because it, it tells CBS believe, yeah. to go fuck itself, but also, we're putting the show at risk. The show... I just... I want, I want the show to do good, and if you can afford the six bucks a month until this show is over, do it, because it'll be worth it if we get more like this. Yep. And, but, I mean, but then every... you're supporting a bullshit platform. I don't know, I'm it's so true. torn. <laughs> I mean, if you have friends, every time you press play is a view. Mm. So, so borrow. If if you can if Anybody you wants my afford, login? If you cannot afford, ask a friend if they have it and if they do ask borrow, if you it. Can borrow it. Cause like I said, every time you press play on a fresh on a fresh playthrough is a view. So it still counts. Kick them a dollar or two or something like yep. that if you got it. Yeah. Take them out for coffee. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm torn too. I hope it does well. Yeah. The part of me that remembers what happened with Firefly on Fox says it's not going to do well. Mm. This is a different kind of bullshit, but... Yeah. 
<sighs> yeah. Anyway, that's our show. Cleo, where can they find you? They can find me ranting about corporate greed at Cleomoto on Twitter. I'm, I want to. I want to start like tweeting shit like that because a whole lot of bullshit with the the shadow of Middle Earth Shadow of War game has got me really mad, and it seems like the same situation. So I might just start ranting about it. Go for it, <laughs> Nikki. Where can they find you? I think I'm just going to be ranting in general about everything <laughs> on Twitter at the Venom 24 L E U I V E N 24. You can find me on Twitter at Philidrin. Not ranting, being the sane, logical individual. You're the Vulcan? No, oh, fuck that. I'm going to be ranting probably too. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you can find all of us on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google, Plus, MySpace, and YouTube at ASOTV Podcast. You can follow us at those places for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, movies, and games. Thank you all for watching, and live long and prosper. Yes. Oh, I didn't even get to do it, and I can't anymore. Not with this. Well, I can with this hand. It, which hand is it supposed to be done with? Right. right or the left? Oh, I'm fucked. Which one? I think it's your right it's hand. To be, it's supposed oh, to be right. It, okay. Okay. With my yeah, left why hand. Why am I better at my left hand than my right one? I don't know. Yeah, but both. it really, my right hand really, really hurts that I'm doing it right now.